What's going on, Nintendo Indie fans? Welcome back to Indie Corner. What's up Nintendo gamers and welcome back to Indie Corner, the best show on the web to get all of your Nintendo Indie news all in one place. On this show we cover anything that's been released in the eShop, new indie games on the horizon, Kickstarter projects, anything you need to know about indie games. So let's just get right into it with your eShop updates. Looking at the past few weeks, we had quite a few new titles added to the Wii U eShop. Starting off with games released in both North America and Europe, there was Gunman Clive HD. Gum and Clive 1 and 2 were first released on the 3DS and have now made their way to the console platform in glorious HD. We also saw the release of the long-awaited Runbo on the Wii U. This 9-player local multiplayer title has you frantically racing for the trophy while colored platforms pop in and out with the background. The game features many different modes great for parties and solo play and also has a ton of Nindy cameos. Another long-awaited title, Cube Director's Cut, was finally released. This physics platformer puts you in a first-person view with special gloves that let you manipulate cubes in your environment. Players must solve puzzles in each room with the help of these gloves. The Swindle, which I first discovered at PAX East, was also released. The Swindle is a steampunk cybercrime caper about breaking into buildings, hacking their systems, stealing all their cash, and quickly running away again before the police show up. Each building that you'll be breaking into are randomly generated, ensuring you have a fresh experience each time. Lastly, we have a more laid-back explore game titled Star Sky. In Star Sky, you'll be exploring the night in a 2D world looking for secrets. Who knows what you'll find under the night sky. Now we take a look at games only released in the European territory. First up is Zombie Defense on the Wii U. The world has gone to shit and it's up to you to deploy soldiers and their guns to stop the hordes of zombies from taking over. Players in Europe can now explore the history of gaming through Life of Pixel. In this 2D platformer, players control a single pixel as he travels through all the retro generations of gaming. Don't think the journey will be a cakewalk, however, as the difficulty has been ramped up to match games of old. We've also got Stoneshire, which made its way overseas. The game takes quite a few notes from Minecraft and puts you in the boots of a curious dwarf. Along with your trusty pickaxe, you'll explore the world and reshape it however you see fit. Over in the North American market, there were several titles only released there. First one on our list is Explodibomb. The game juggles your attention between the Wii U gamepad and the TV screen. On the screen, you must shoot down incoming attackers while keeping an eye on the bomb via the gamepad and ensuring it doesn't hit any obstacles. Next we have Funky Physics arrive on the Wii U. This simple yet challenging game has you racking your brain to remove all the green blocks on the screen. Then there was Pixel Slime U which challenges players to get the lowest score. In Pixel Slime U, the slime automatically runs right. Players need to coordinate jumps to avoid death. Each death will make your score go up, which in this game is considered bad. For a more classic shoot 'em up experience, there was Full Blast which was released. Just like most traditional shoot 'em ups, shoot down anything on the screen and dodge bullets all while flying over a vibrant backdrop. Lastly, there was Brave Tank Hero, which puts you in the seat of a tank to save Paradise City. 50 missions and 3 types of tanks await you in this 3D action tank game. So there you go, plenty of new games to try out on your Wii U or 3DS, so go check those out. Now let's take a look at updates on projects that have already been announced on this show. We got an update on the long-delayed Assault Android Cactus. This insane twin-stick shooter was originally set for an early 2014 release, but is now set to be releasing in Q1 of 2016. Opening the door for quite a few possibilities, we also saw the release of a Shovel Knight amiibo. Aside looking really cool, the amiibo will unlock cooperative play in Shovel Knight, add new customization options, including new exclusive relics, and add in challenges stages. We've also received an update from Renegade Kid that Treasure Knots was back on track for development for the 3DS. As a reminder, Treasure Knots is a 2D side-scrolling dungeon crawler in which you must collect $1 million in treasures so you can return home. Now if you've already played everything in the eShop, here's some new projects to look forward to. Starting us off, we have Gunscape, which is being developed for the Wii U. The game is a first-person shooter inspired from the classics such as Quake and Turok. Gunscape will support the Wiimote controller as a control option. Additionally, the game takes some notes from Minecraft and uses a similar aesthetic style all while letting you custom build your own levels and sharing them across any platform. Pump BMX Plus was also announced for a Wii U release. 
As you might expect, ride a BMX bike and perform tricks to score points. As you improve your skills, you'll be able to add more customization to your bike and become the best BMX rider there is. In a completely different genre, Poi was also revealed as coming to the Wii U. Poi is a 3D platformer explorer game. The goal of the game is to seek out explorer medallions across the world. As you collect more medallions, more of the world will be available for you to explore. The game is set to release in 2016. For a more brain-racking game, you might be interested in Shadow Puppeteer, which was recently announced for the Wii U. The game is a puzzle platformer in which you control lights and shadows. Control both the boy and his shadow independently and make your way through various levels with the help of a few light tricks. Another new Wii U title on the horizon is Totem Topple, which is a vertical castle defense game. In Totem Topple, you'll be adding new types of defense totems one on top of another to fight off incoming enemies. If an enemy reaches your base, your totem will drop down a peg. Fight to stay alive for as long as you can. Lastly, there's the beautiful looking game titled Candle coming to the Wii U. Candle falls into the puzzle adventure genre where you explore a 2D land and solve puzzles by interacting with different elements. Some puzzles will require you to find and place items in certain ways in the world. You can also get involved in indie development by supporting these projects which are looking for some crowdfunding. Inspired by the original 1986 Saturday morning cartoon, Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs has a stretch goal for the 3DS on Kickstarter. The game is a 2D 16-bit space western running gun shoot 'em up and is seeking $75,000 in funding. So here on Indie Corner we like to go beyond just the news, so let's go check out what our reviewers at NintendoEnthusiast.com thought of some of these indie games. Let's start off with Nihilumbra for the Wii U which was reviewed by Eric. The game received a great score of 8.5 out of 10 thanks to great game mechanics and beautiful art. Unfortunately, the game does suffer from a short story and little challenge. Meanwhile, Badland Game of the Year Edition for the Wii U also received a great score of 8 out of 10 from Jonathan. The game has tons of content, great gameplay, and a beautiful atmosphere. He did find that there were some freezing issues, however. On the 3DS side, Giancarlo reviewed Epic Word Search. Turns out the game wasn't so epic with a 4 out of 10 score. While there's a large amount of word searches, there's little challenge to be had and clunky controls. Not faring much better, Endless Golf scored a 3.5 out of 10 for the Wii U. While a smart concept, Eric was unimpressed with the game's boring visuals and lack of variety. Wind Up Night 2 did better, scoring a 7.5 out of 10 by Akia. He felt the game flowed well and had a good atmosphere. He did lament the game's quick rise in difficulty and bland visuals. Eli had a go with Runbo, which received an impressive score of 9.5 out of 10. He claims it's the best local multiplayer game on the Wii U that brims with personality. His only complaint were about the few frame drops in Adventure Mode. Over at Sean's desk, he was reviewing Full Blast which scored an OK 6.5 out of 10. While a fun game and good for the shoot 'em up fan, he felt the game was a bit rushed and suffered from lack of polish. Akia didn't have as much fun with Motor Melon for the Wii U, giving it a 4.5 out of 10. Level design is fairly good but the controls are awful and the frame rate is just terrible. Faring even worse was Pixel Slime U, which hit a 2 out of 10. Eric had absolutely nothing good to say about this game, and we won't even go through the list of cons. On a better note, Gunman Clive HD Collection for the Wii U received a stellar 9 out of 10. While there's nothing new here for veterans of the series, it's a great pickup for anyone to try out the games if they've missed out, now in beautiful HD. Jonathan also had a go with Factotum, which scored a 6.5 out of 10. The game was praised for great level design and a cool atmosphere, but the game loses its charm fairly quick. It lacks any addicting factor or elements of excitement. Recently, Eric played through Dragon Fantasy, the volumes of Wisteria for both the 3DS and the Wii U. The Wii U version scored better with an 8 out of 10 compared to the 3DS's 7.5 out of 10. The main difference was the 3DS version's text was too large, had no 3D elements, and no cross-save features with the Wii U. Last on our list was Cube, which Akia scored a good 7 out of 10. The visuals are subpar, but the progression and difficulty is smooth, and the puzzles are challenging. That's all the Nintendo Indie News I have for you guys today on September 15th, 2015. Thanks again for joining me, and remember for more Nintendo Indie News, you can always head over to NintendoEnthusiast.com, where we give you news on a daily basis. You can always find me at Twitter, at Jason underscore Lapine, or the Indie Corner account, at Indie Corner underscore NE. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, keep on playing Indie.